Nuclear operatives can now purchase the Syndicate Assault Cyborg Teleporter, a lean, mean killing machine with access to an energy sword, LMG, cryptographic sequencer, and a pinpointer. It will go into your hand just like a normal reinforcement, and like the other reinforcements, the, the Assault Borg is a ghost roll. Nuclear operatives need reinforcements. You, a cold silicon killing machine, will help them. The Cyborg is considered a good deal because all the equipment is about 80 telecrystal cost and including like a reinforcement. Borgs do have some downsides. They aren't healed through the conventional methods. It takes a pretty long welding action to fully heal them. But that's just a thing. It fully heals them. So that's pretty powerful on its own. They also have 200 health until they go into a critical state. So they're actually pretty tanky as well, even if they don't have like the proper damage resistance as a normal Nuki. So they're quite formidable. In the first tool set, you have a crowbar, a cobra, a emag, and a syndicate pinpointer. You also have an L6 saw. It's a modified version for cyborg use. It's uh, just about identical to the L6 saw as far as I'm aware. It has the same amount of ammo, has 100 shots, it shoots at the same fire rate, and it uses the same high damage bullets. And the final module is just an energy sword. So this is a somewhat defensive option for a Borg. Also, uh, the model actually isn't like obvious in their hand so unless people notice you glowing or obviously see you mailing with it they may not notice that right away right away you're technically like automatically emagged in quotations your laws are to just obey syndicate agents which in the case of this would be the nuclear operatives uh it's it's somewhat of an expensive purchase but you are basically getting a more well-equipped reinforcement that's easier to fix they don't have any access and can't get access but they do have an emag so you're actually purchasing a fairly well-rounded uh, assaulter, I mean, they're the assault cyborg. They can get through doors, they can reflect projectiles, they can shoot people, uh, they even have a crowbar. So, it's a pretty, pretty solid purchase option, and it's really cool to see uh, syndicate versions of Borgs. That's something I quite enjoy seeing personally. Nuclear operatives can also now purchase Syndicats or Tantilla Crystal. A hand cat equipped with a microbomb implant explodes when seriously injured, can bite painfully. It well, It is literally a cat wearing a blood red hard suit, which is just phenomenal. It can bite people and explode itself on command and it has a micro bomb in it so it can do quite a lot of damage. They're basically sentient suicide bombs in the form of a cat so um yeah that's kind of that, that's just something that's only in space station. For 12 telecrystals nuclear operatives and syndicate agents can purchase a singularity beacon. A device that attracts singularities has to be anchored and powered to cause the singularities to grow and consumed. So if you purchase it, it actually instantly anchors and will be turned on, but somebody could just unanchor it and move it. And just for the sake of seeing how it works, I will spawn a singularity a little bit away from it so you can watch it gravitate towards it and will indeed grow. So we'll see the singularity goes straight towards it. And once it's consumed, it has gained some energy. It's not a ton of energy because it didn't it didn't exactly skip from stage three to four, but I'm sure it keeps the singularity alive for longer and causes more damage because of that. Mechanical compression is a new tier one industrial research it allows you to make the flat packer 1001, and just like any other board, you have to first make the flat packer, and it costs the same as every other board. Once you have a flat packer, it's really simple. Inside, there is a UI, you stick in a board. So for example, I have a flat packer board in a flat packer. So now once you put any machine board or computer board inside of there, you just have to pay the resource cost plus a very small premium for the convenience. Once it's done, you'll have a flat packer version of whatever it was. So yes, I picked a flat packer to be confusing on purpose. We have a flat packer 1001 flat pack. A flat pack is only a 2x2 two two in your inventory, so it's very convenient. And just like AME parts, you just take a multi-tool and left-click it, and you'll have an instantly anchored device wherever you place it. So it allows science to be much more mobile with building new machines, and makes upgrading machines just a little bit uh, quicker as well. A new technology has been added to allow you to craft Hellfire freezers and Hellfire heaters. They are basically just upgraded heaters and upgraded freezers. So the maximum, the minimum temperature for a normal freezer is 73 Kelvin. Minimum temperature for a Hellfire freezer is 23 Kelvin. Heater, 593. Hellfire heater, 1193. So it allows you to make hotter and colder loops of air, and I'm sure it will be used for other purposes that are a bit more nefarious than that. Electric anomalies are now actually specifically target Tesla coils. So that means you can actually use the pulse of an electric anomaly to power a Tesla coil. Um, I don't know exactly how practical this would be for getting power, but it does make it safer, and it is a 
side effect of an electrical anomaly, so you can at least use it for something good. The medical tech fab can now make rolls of gauze with two rolls of cloth. You can craft these by hand still, but the tech fab lets you craft multiple at a time and is significantly faster than crafting by hand. Plasma canisters are now much cheaper to purchase at cargo. They're only $4,000 now. Uh, plasma is useful for both science, Atmos, uh, you name it. Uh, they can make freeze on with the plasma. Science needs plasma for artifacts. So it's nicer that's a little bit cheaper because these departments need them. And if they misplace plasma or science doesn't even start with plasma in most uh, stations, it was a pretty expensive purchase. Bounties have been changed. Cargo bounties no longer have time limits and there are also more available at once. And the rewards have been adjusted. So I'll just scroll through it a little bit so you can see like 10 syringes, 5,000 bucks. And you'll see there's no timers. And yes, there are indeed more bounties because some bounties are a lot easier to complete than others like this one you can't just like go out and rush you have to go specifically mine it and uh yeah so this does help quite a lot and makes cargo just a little bit less hellish and doesn't require as good of imperfect communication in a rather chaotic department at times salvage mobs like space bears kangaroos carps those types of things ticks uh, are no longer eligible for ghost rolls. They were overly abused and they may return when salvage expeditions are reworked. We'll have to wait and see. The salvage magnet has received an overhaul. It now allows you to pick from different types of asteroids and those asteroids will tell you what type of resources are on them. So there's rich and poor and then it will tell you the various resources like quartz, uranium, plasma, iron, coal, silver, that, that type of thing. And the wreckages have been removed from the pool. And the reason for why selecting wreckages has been removed is because a lot of the wreckages are unmaintained, unbalanced, and there's a larger expedition rework pending. We'll just select the asteroid spiral. The shape does actually, or the name actually does affect how it generates. So I'll just, we'll pull in a spiral. It can generate pretty far away. And if you look on the map, it's actually rather intense. You do get 360 seconds for mining this, so you get more time than before. But there's actually quite a lot to mine, and there's actually room to stand. It isn't just all mining, and there's now more natural veins rather than just having to hit every single rock constantly. So this gives you some more visual variety for mining, and lets you more so prioritize what you're actually looking for rather than just everything all at once. Shotgun, shotgun cartridge dispensers and bandoliers have been reworked to act like magazines in the sense that you can actually use them to speed load. So for example, this shotgun's empty. I can actually then either dispense the ammo directly into the shotgun or I could dispense in my speed the uh, bandolier for later. And then I could use the bandolier to load the shotgun directly itself. So this can let you store a lot more ammo and reload, reload more efficiently than having to use the entire grid inventory. And it keeps it in line with the other magazine based weapons in the game. The Observation Kit has been added to the game for Syndicate agents to purchase. It is a four telecrystal purchase, includes Syndicate Crew Monitor, High Power Cell, and Security HUD disguise of sunglasses. Inside, it will have the obvious Observations Kit box, and indeed, it will have sunglasses that have a Security HUD. It will have a High Capacity Power Cell, and the reason for that is, is to power your Crew Monitor. And it is a Crew Monitor that makes you valid. It's obviously labeled as a Syndicate. If you press Z, it shows you the crew monitor. It will show everyone that has suit sensors on where they are. You can also use it to show departments in case you're unfamiliar with the map and you aren't using a third party website. So there is that effect as well. Some implants have had their costs changed. DNA scrambler from 10 to five telecrystals, EMP implant were from three to two, and the uplink implant went from four to two. So you can save some money here now and make these implanters a slightly more attractive option. Rig boxing gloves have been nerfed pretty significantly. They no longer stun in three hits. They attack slower and now it takes five hits to put somebody into a stamina crit. The rig boxing gloves are still really good melee weapons. They're still only available to passengers and boxers, so they're still going to remain somewhat rareish anyway. And, I mean, they're still it still is easily one of the strongest melee weapons in the game, something that could stun you while doing damage like that. The medical HUD, which spawns in medical doctor's lockers by default, will now actually display the health of living crew. And then there's also the diagnostic HUD, which will display the health of cyborgs. So there are different HUDs for seeing different things, but doctors will be able to instantly at a glance see how healthy somebody is and how unhealthy somebody is. Also, it has de some definite PvP or just fighting potential because you can com instantly compare how much health you have versus them, where otherwise it could be somewhat difficult to know exactly how damaged people are. Also, the critical state um, does change colors a little bit, but it is somewhat hard to notice uh, the exact differences. 
but I mean, they'll be sideways on the ground, so you'll probably be able to figure out that the orange is a critical health bar pretty quickly. Last thing I'll cover this week was not technically of this week, but the changelogs have been having some issues, and I missed this. It's a little cosmetic thing, but janitor players would definitely enjoy this. There is now a janitorial service light. You can wire it up to a button, like so, and when it's on, it will blink, and it has the little mop uh, icon next to it. So if you're like working as a janitor, and you come back and you see this light on, um, that means there's probably someone who needs your service, and then you can turn it off. Uh, I have There are some apps that have this implemented already by default, so I expect to see it be used slightly for just some RP for janitors. Plus, I mean, it just looks nice. Anyways, that's all I got for this week. I want to thank our maintainers and contributors, as always, for their hard work to the game, and thank you for watching.